Isn't it wonderful to wake up on Christmas Day, look outside and see the snow falling? I'm sure it brings joy to everybody in the family. Well, I wouldn't know because I'm Australian and it's in the range of 30 degrees Celsius or 86 freedom units. But today we are going to change that. Not the temperature problem, I don't have that much power, but the snow problem. So today we are looking at X-Snow. This is an application that dates back from 1984, becoming its own program in 1993, but I'll go more into its history in just a bit. Now, it should be really obvious what this application can do. It's going to make snow fall down on your screen. But as you can see from all the other things happening, there is a bunch of other fun stuff to talk about as well. Now, on certain setups, you may notice it's not really visible. So the snow particle effects and the birds and sand and all that fun stuff is always going to be running behind your monitors. So if I'm using this in more of a tiling window functionality or I have something full screened, you won't actually see any of the effects. Effects, otherwise it would be incredibly annoying. So if you're using something that's a floating window manager or you're using something that has floating functionality like awesome WM, you can get the most out of this application. Now on some desktop environments, it won't actually work because of the way their compositors and all of that fun stuff actually functions. Because what will happen is X Snow is going to spawn behind the desktop of that desktop environment, but most things nowadays, it is going to function just fine, especially if you are just using a tiling window manager like this. Also, regardless of which desktop you're actually on, it's always going to be running exactly the same in the background. So I'm going to spawn a terminal so you can see when I actually swap. Right now, we're on desktop 2. If I go to desktop 3, all of the snow remains exactly the same. The first thing you'll notice about this application is obviously the snow falling, but the longer you run the application, the more you'll start to notice that on various things on the screen, the snow is actually starting to build up. So along the bottom of the screen, and also on any of the windows you actually have visible. Now, if you are running a multi-monitor setup like I am, it's only going to build up snow on the desktop that you're currently focused on, at least for the windows. I believe with the, yeah, with the bottom, you can't see it right now, but with the snow along the bottom, for whatever reason it is going to build up on that, that may be some weird issue related to Awesome WM though. I don't know if that's consistent across every single environment. Now, originally when this application was first made, there was only seven unique snowflakes. You can probably tell right now there is much, much more than seven different designs. So nowadays, there is about 300 different variations that do, you know, make it seem a lot more unique. If at any point you do want to go back to the old style, though, and just have everything change back to that style, in the settings menu, there is this button to set it to all vintage, and that will go back to the way it used to look. Personally, I think the original snowflakes actually did look better. Nowadays, the snowflakes are more like, you know, brushes you might see in something like GIMP, as opposed to actual snowflakes. Now, when Santa flies on by, he's not just a part of the background that can't be interacted with. When he flies into a window, you might notice something really fun. It actually starts to knock the snow off the top of the window. This effect can be turned up. By default, it's uh, not exactly the most impressive, but if you turn it all the way up, as you can see, it sort of launches all of the particles that get spawned and any of those particles that do fall can actually land on another window. In that same vein, whenever you actually close a window, any of the snow that is built up on top of that window, for example with this terminal here, is going to start to fall as well. And this can be caught either by the bottom of the screen or by any of the windows that are in the way as well. It's a nice little effect rather than just having the snow disappear whenever the window is closed. It's kind of hard to predict when it's actually going to happen, but every so often, some of the snow that's built up on top of the window or on the bottom of the screen is actually going to be knocked around by, I guess, a bit of a breeze. So even though the snow has built up on these places, it's not actually going to remain static then, even outside of the cases where it's being knocked off by the sleigh. Now, in the original version of the application, there wasn't actually a night sky, so things like the stars you might see, or the occasional yellow streaks, which are actually meteorites, along with the moon, weren't actually a thing. Now, the fun thing about the meteorites is, for whatever reason, in the settings, they're not called meteors or meteorite, it's meteor. I 
don't think that's a correct term, but maybe it is. Maybe I've just never heard the term Meteo. Considering the fact there's also a comma at the end of this tooltip, though, I feel like it might just be a mistake. Now, even though the settings window is definitely quite ugly, it does give you a lot of control over what's going on in the application. So let's go and turn up the snow. We can turn off the blow off, the on windows, on bottom, on scenery. So the snow actually can land on things in the background as well. I don't know if you can notice them super well, but there's, I guess that's a deer there. There's a couple of trees around as well and any of the snow that actually hits those things it's not going to get stuck in it as long as being stuck on the bottom but it will get stuck there at least for just a moment off screen have gone and turned everything sensible up and you might notice that it's starting to get a little bit ridiculous it has started to lag a bit as well and that seems kind of weird considering what the application actually is it's an application from like 1993 surely Surely it should be perfectly fine, right? Well, it should be. But this is also an application made for Xorg. And Xorg isn't exactly designed around things like this being the most performance. So it's not lagging out my system. It's actually the application running into limits for what it's actually allowed to be given. So it's mainly animation lag, but... Maybe on an older system, it could have been a big deal. The other problem is at least going by the settings menu, it's not GPU accelerated. Everything is being done on the CPU. Now, I don't know what CPU factor 100 means. The higher, the smoother Xeno will run, but also use more CPU power. I don't know what 300 means either. It's some metric that means run it with more performance, and it is running considerably smoother now. In my case, I am running this on a 165 hertz monitor, so even so, it is going to struggle quite a bit because that is quite a bit of work for the CPU to be doing, but it is definitely running better than it was before. And without a doubt, it's running way better than it would have on a system back in, what did I say, 1993. If you want it to really lag though, let it run for a minute or so building up snow on the max settings on top of a window, and then go and close the window. It doesn't know what to do for a moment. It's like, ah, oh, I guess the snow should fall, maybe at some point. When it works out what to do with the particles, then it will sort of deal with it. Once the snow starts falling, it's usually fine, because that's when it starts deleting some of the particles, and now we're back to good. I just tried maxing out the intensity with the original snowflakes, and honestly, I feel like the original snowflakes do just look better, and the newer ones really do take away from the application. It's probably hard to see on YouTube, but go and run this application for yourself and compare the two of them, and you're probably going to have the same conclusion that I came to. I should have mentioned this early, but you can actually go and change the sprite for Santa as well. And there are both with and without Rudolph versions, just in case, you know, you just really don't like Rudolph for whatever reason. So this is the one that it faults to, but in the vintage version, it didn't show this sort of like 3D effect where you have reindeers on either side. It's just got the single line of them because I guess having all of this animation at once might have been a bit too much for a 1993 system, but you could even just get rid of that and have a train if you want to. I would have liked the idea of just having a custom sprite here as well, but sadly that's not there. Obviously you could always just go and fork the application and just add it yourself if you really want to though. The same is true with the sprites that appear in the background as well. So there's trees, there's a house, there is a reindeer, a moose, another tree, and also a polar bear, because as we know, every good neighborhood has at least one polar bear roaming around. <laughs> but with the, uh, the the vintage version of the sprites, okay, let's just show, no, I just want the vintage version, nothing else. The vintage version is just going to be these tree outlines, which definitely don't look anywhere near as good as the original snow sprites did. Honestly, I feel like this is a really cool application, and if you want to go and Christmas up your desktop, I feel like you should probably go and, you know, change your wallpaper first, but this is a good second step if you really just are obsessed with snow, or maybe you've never seen snow and you want to have some level of snow in your life.
I want to talk about where this application originally came from because when something's been around for this long and is still actually being maintained, it's always going to have some sort of interesting history. Yes, this is actually still being maintained. It actually received an update about 30 days ago. I don't know why it's still being maintained, but I love that it is because something like this, even though it started out as such an old project, still works perfectly fine on a modern Linux desktop. Back in 1984, when the original version of this application was made, it wasn't made as this thing that just generally adds Christmas to your desktop. It was actually made as an animated greeting card. Animated greeting cards aren't really a thing nowadays, but I guess the closest equivalent would be sending someone a GIF through Discord or Messenger or whatever it is that you use. Back then, though, it was actually made for the Apple Macintosh and was just called Snow. Later on, the developer actually acquired a Silicon Graphics workstation, and this workstation could actually run X11-based display server, and this is where, in 1993, he started to develop X-Snow. Now, this developer actually still maintains a macOS version up to today. That is called iSnow Classic for macOS slash OS X, and it even shows the old Mac logo. But you can actually install it from the Mac App Store, and it was last updated, as you can see here, December 7th, 2021. So this is still very much being maintained today. However, at some point, a different developer took over the XSnow project, and that is the one that I'm actually using today. Now, the problem with XSnow is some distros actually still ship the old version that was being maintained by Rick Jensen. That was version 1.4.2. Anything that is Debian based in the standard repos, it still has that old version. If you're using something Arch based though, you will be able to get 3.3 .3 or whatever the latest version is when you actually see this video. If you're using something Arch based though, the AUR does actually have both versions available. So there is the X Snow package. This is the old version. This is the one you compile from source. But then there's the X Snow bin, which is the newer version maintained by this newer developer. Why there needs to be any difficulty whatsoever when it comes to installing an application that makes Snow appear on your desktop, I have absolutely no idea. Now, even with the newer version, I would recommend disabling your compositor. I've noticed it doesn't exactly play completely nicely with PyCom on a tiling window manager. That I think is mainly because it actually adds a window onto your desktop and PyCom then tries to do things to it and treat it like a regular window. But if I go and disable PyCom, no problem whatsoever. It works as it should. I don't know about other compositors, things like Kwin and Mudder. I hear from the developer that they do work nowadays, but if you do have any issues, first step, just go and disable your compositing. Now, sadly, there used to be a Windows version released as shareware, but you're not going to probably be running it nowadays because uh, the last version that was officially supported was Windows XP, and it was last updated in 2003. Maybe it works. I haven't tried it on a modern version of Windows. You might have some luck, but I would be very, very doubtful that anything's actually going to function. So that's going to be pretty much it for me then. Let me know in the comment section down below what your plans for Christmas are, whether you are going to do something with your family, or maybe you're going to just sit in your bedroom, turn the lights off, and just... I don't know, play video games or something. Whatever it is that you're doing with your time, let me know. If you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, it's the only very paid link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five of YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.